But when the deputies violate us, this is what happens. Have a good day. Well, we can't because we've been violated by our own government. Okay. And you, you don't want to. You can stop police there's, misconduct there's, right there's, now, but you don't want to. Form. You get y'all. You know what's happening. There's you don't need me to write it down. Y'all know what's happening. Y'all already know. Y'all can fix it if you wanted to. Okay. You don't want to. Have a good day. Please you leave. don't want to fix it. Please leave. Why don't you want to fix it? You just want to make everyone leave. leave. Just leave. Just leave. Got it. Bye. Got it. Howdy, I'm Justin Pulliam, and I'm a voter in Fort Bend County, Texas. Last month, I went up to the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office to talk about cleaning up the law enforcement agency and ending police misconduct. Unfortunately, I was brushed off. Well, more like kicked out. I, I never received uh, sheriff's uh, text messages with Commissioner Morales. I, I, I just never received it. As you may know, that's a violation of the government code. That's a real crime. I it's an no offense that the sheriff's I'm offense not, I'll take care office of this should. One, okay, buddy. How about that? You um, give me this one. I got this one. Okay. Well, you know that's a good start. Are we good? No, we're not good because this stuff keeps door. happening. The but deputies your, don't identify. She's a nice. Hey, you got till four o'clock and we'll lock the doors. Okay. At four o'clock, you gotta leave. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. And so, Justin, so, so maybe, thanks, so maybe tomorrow we'll address police misconduct. A few weeks later, Fort Bend County Sheriff's deputy shot and killed an innocent man. The man wasn't resisting. He wasn't fighting. He wasn't running away. Sure, he was armed, but that's part of the job when you're a police officer. The victim was 37-year-old Caleb Rule. He was a deputy constable at the Precinct 4 Constable's Office in Fort Bend County. And this recently filed report with the Texas Attorney General's Office provides more information about the deputy sheriff who shot him. But the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office continues to hide the details, conceal the identity of the shooter, and really just keep everyone in the dark. And if you've been following my channel, you know that I investigate a lot of the high-profile officer-involved shootings in Texas, uh, oftentimes working to identify the shooter and figure out why did this happen. And no doubt this incident will, will be the same. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of it eventually. But today, this story isn't about that, about the shooter. It's about me, a voter, looking for answers from Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels, who's also running for Congress. Most of the time when I go up to the sheriff's office, administrative office during business hours, the sheriff isn't there. So imagine my excitement when I pulled in the parking lot in his regular vehicle and also the Mustang that he often takes to public events and shows off. Both of them were in the parking lot, so I knew he'd be inside. I guess is it now okay to use asset forfeiture for just about anything in Texas, including even campaigning and publicity? The sheriff was walking down the hall when I walked in the lobby, but he didn't let me in. So although this report substantially narrowed it down, uh, I'm not going to reveal the identity of the shooter today. Hopefully the sheriff will do the right thing, come clean, show all the body cam, reveal the details, and so maybe there will be some justice. How's it going? I mean, I'd like to talk to the sheriff before he heads on to the funeral. He doesn't have time. Oh, yeah, He's I'd busy. Like to, I'd really like to talk about. I don't know who Chad McRae is. Who is Chad McRae? Who is Chad McRae? I'd like to talk to the sheriff. He's busy. Okay, I'll catch him on his way out. He'll have a second. Sheriff Troy Nels has been too busy for me for almost a year now, yet five minutes later while I was in there in the office, and there they were posting fluff to his congressional campaign Facebook page. 
Wait, hey, there's that Mustang. I was just going to say, doing? I'm doing great. I Good mean, all you. things considered, Good obviously, today's not the best day. This is busy. Um, we were just noticing a lot of police vehicles and county vehicles. They were moving a little bit fast towards Needville. Maybe they slowed down. We don't need any more problems this week. Last week was bad enough. Um, also, I have some open records requests. If someone can take them over here, I can that's take great. Them for anybody. Sure. If not, I can go over to the I'll other it. office. But, um, no, I mean, what you got? Well, it's, it's about last week. I do have my glasses. It's, um, That's cool. I'll take them for you. Anyways, I'd also really like to hear that 911 call. I don't know if it's been released yet. Has it? No, sir. Okay. Well, I requested that too. But it's still going through the uh, investigation. So, process. I mean, y'all posted y'all's attorney general form the other day. And, um, I mean, that's the story that's probably going to run tomorrow morning. So, I'd sure like to talk to someone about it. And I don't even, I, I gotta be honest, I'm not even sure what you're talking about there. I got a lot of stuff going on today, buddy, so you're ahead of me one step on that. About what happened on Friday. Okay. I'm like, yeah, because I got, That's I got what like all this two is different about. events going on here, so. Okay. Well, it's about the. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take all this for you, okay? All right, I appreciate it. All right. I'll let the guys know, make sure we're careful going down there. Go for it. All right, thanks for sending that uh, offense report the other week. Cool. Anything else, bud? No, that's all. Careful. All right, are you going out there? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to, I got planning meetings on the, on the, uh, you know, we're going to have the body here for uh, Floyd come just outside right. the county. Yeah. So yeah, that's next week's deal. I'll be right uh, there in the middle of it, by the way. So let everyone Probably know. this weekend. So, really? Okay. I'll let everybody know that you'll be there. Yeah. We've been, been in the middle of all the Houston stuff. I didn't, so. think, you'd, I didn't think you'd be too far away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. You take Thank care. you, sir. Good luck with all those planning you. things. You bet. So although the sheriff was too busy to come out and talk to me after I gave the request to Patrol Captain Holtz, he immediately went into the sheriff's office and other sheriff's office administrators were coming in and out after that. It was really quite a sight. My sheriff, Troy Nels, he's running to be the newest United States congressman from Southeast Texas. It's an open seat, the incumbent's retiring. He's in a runoff election in the Republican primary right now, and there will be a Democrat challenger in November for whoever wins that. So Congress, uh, the House of Representatives, that's, that's like the Republic part of our government, our constitutional government, where we elect representatives to go to Washington. And what are they supposed to do in Washington? I, I would like to think that it's to represent the voters, the local constituents back home and, and, and represent them, bring their voice and, and represent them up in the Congressional Assembly. Uh, maybe other things are all too often represented instead. It's concerning to me, maybe it's concerning to you that even as only a countywide elected official, he's not accessible to the voters, at least to this voter. And then if he becomes my congressman, do, do I expect to have any representation up in Washington, D.C.? And remember, stepping aside from the journalism, I'm a longtime conservative Republican activist. Do you think that someone running in the Republican Party primary would want to talk to me, maybe even try to win me over?
so the players in the local politics here in Fort Bend County, it's it's kind of can be uh, some factions of tight-knit people. And so uh, back to the shooting where it was a deputy constable in Precinct 4. Let me tell you about the elected constable out there. His name's Trevor Nails. That's right, the sheriff's brother is the elected constable. And there's even more to it than that. Right now, Trevor Nels is running for the sheriff's seat. So you have the constable who's running for the sheriff's office. His deputy was shot and killed by a sheriff's deputy, by his brother's sheriff's deputy. When there's two agencies involved, you might think that there'd be a lot of um, more transparency because it would be harder to keep everyone quiet. So I'm sitting back here wondering still, why are we all in the dark? Will there be truth? Will we have justice? Or will it be only the politics as usual? This is what the crime scene looked like exactly 24 hours after the shooting. As you can see, well, I'm just going to step out and let it play so you can see just how quiet, calm, and well lit this scene is. I was pretty shocked to be the only one out there. I thought certainly there would be someone from the sheriff's office and constable's office taking notes and impressions of what it was like there in that location at that time of night. Uh, very important to an investigation, especially the one in the nature of uh, what has been billed by many as friendly fire. You would think the, the exact scene, environment, lighting, uh, uh, really everything around there at that time would be central to such investigation. I guess I might just be thinking too highly of the government. I thought they would be out there. I thought they would be doing a very diligent investigation. After all, it is one of their own, uh, but perhaps my expectations are just a little bit too high. I continued to wait outside the sheriff's office. I, I knew he would have a couple minutes to, certainly he would want to answer some questions from a voter who was very concerned about all this. And I was looking for real answers and keep watching if you want to see the real answers that certainly we know the elected sheriff who's running for Congress would provide. Fortunately, there's other options to get to the real story besides just waiting on Trevor Nels and Troy Nels. So I went up to the Precinct 3 Constable's office looking for information. There, I dropped off a records request and I talked to Constable Wayne Thompson. Yeah, okay. Justin Pulliam, yeah, good to I see you. Yeah, I just called you back. Good to see y'all. Uh, we got the request. They told me we'll get what it What it was. Together. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you saw that and everything. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was over at the sheriff's office. Troy hid for an hour and a half, then he snuck out the back. I no reason to hide. Yeah, um, we got it. I was over in Katy because we got this uh, protest deal tonight. Our, our thoughts and prayers are with both, you know, the family of Deputy Rule and, of course, the uh, other deputies that were involved on scene. It's a terrible thing to have to live with. But don't you think it's pretty crazy? The constable is Troy Nails' brother. Well, there's well how how do we get yeah, how do we get the full story when that's the situation? Well, I you know I, I think uh, you mentioned you, you mentioned speaking to the Rangers or sending them a request. Obviously, they're involved in the investigation as they are with many things like that. And then, uh, the sheriff's office and precinct four should be conducting their own, and you'd have yeah. to reach out to them for that. <laughs> reaching out to this oh boy uh 
can we ask you a personal question? What's next for you politically? I have no idea. No you know, idea. I've got six months uh, left here, and we've done great things. We're going to continue to do great things, and we're in the middle of hurricane season, as you know. We've got the current state of affairs with uh, the the protesting and the other things going around the nation right now, and uh, so six months seems a long way away for me. And right now, I, I still work 16-hour days here. I come in and do extra stuff. I'm probably one of the most approachable and easy elected officials. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, I don't know. Right now, it's just still 100 miles an hour every day, just like it has been today. So. Through the end of your term, you're going to keep hitting the ground. Until well, that's midnight, what we, that's, midnight on the 31st. That's what we love to yeah. see in a public yeah. official. Constable Thompson is retiring, and one of the people looking to take his seat well, right behind me at the end of the hallway, down from the sheriff, is Major Chad Norvell. He's running for Precinct 3 Constable. Yes, let's summarize that. So the sheriff's running for Congress, the sheriff's brother's running for sheriff, and the one of the top sheriff's administrators is running for Constable. I'm not just there to have a little chit chat to get to know someone who's running for office. I have real questions. These are important questions that a lot of people want answers for. And so certainly a transparent official would at least answer two or three questions on the way out to the car on his way to his next appointment, which by the way is the funeral for fallen officer Caleb Rule. I won't stop looking until we know exactly what happened and how it happened. I submitted open records requests across the county, really across the state. Unfortunately, I haven't heard back from anyone except for one agency, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. Nothing out of the county, nothing from Texas DPS. I wouldn't be surprised to learn that they actually spent more time trying to figure out how to dodge me than just coming out and answering the questions. It's not that hard to tell the truth. It wouldn't take long and, and then we could all know what really happened. I wish I could say I'm totally shocked. No, I kind of expected it. This happens to me a lot. He had someone go and pull his truck out of the front parking lot where it's publicly accessible back into the back where all the sheriff deputies uh, keep their fleet vehicles. And so it's a uh, fenced in where he could sneak out the back door, get in and leave without me being able to ask these very important questions that many people in Fort Bend County and across the state would like to have answers to. This is so pathetic, I can't even laugh about it. And it gets even worse, I guess. Not to be outdone by the deputies, they've all been instructed now that they're not to talk to me. They refer me, oh, just go ask for records or PIO, but they don't give out records either. There's more to this story and I'll be covering it one way or the other. I Hope that the information will come from Sheriff Troy Nels, and if not, it will come out. Don't y'all worry. So be sure to subscribe to my channel, enable all notifications. Please always film the police and the government, and never miss an opportunity to ask a hard question of an elected official. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Make mine great by leaving a comment below.